members, the House now comes to the third reading of the Ngātihaua Claims Settlement Bill. Mr Speaker. Uh, the Honourable Christopher Finlinson. Mr Speaker, I move that the Ngātihaua Claims Settlement Bill be now read a third time. And I want to welcome the Tumuaki, the people of Ngātihaua and their supporters to this great occasion, the third reading of their bill. No mai haira mai ki tene whare I greet those watching and listening elsewhere, and of course I want to acknowledge the people of Natihawa who have since passed on and cannot be here today to mark this achievement, moi mai rā. Mr Speaker, today is a very important day in the history of Natihawa and this country as we settle this great iwi's remaining non ropatu historical claims. The settlement represents the culmination of six generations of work, beginning with the Rangatira Wurumu Tamihana Tarapipi Te Waharoa, and continuing today with the actions of Anaru Thompson, the Tumuaki of Ngāti Hawa. The Crown recognises the long and the heavy burden this iwi has shouldered in pursuing justice for the wrongs of the Crown. So I congratulate them on their decision to settle their claim against the Crown, and it is my hope that the settlement heralds the beginning of a new relationship between the Crown and Ngāti Hawa based on the principles of the treaty. Mr Speaker, we have arrived at this milestone because of the strong leadership and the commitment of Anaru Thompson, of Lance Rapana, and the other trustees of the Ngāti Hawa Iwi Trust, as well as Mr Willie Tiaho, who worked on the settlement for Ngāti Hawa. Ngāti Hawa approached the Crown in 2012 with a settlement proposal. It demonstrated their vision and their pragmatism, and I w I'm very well aware, I still remember that day in Bill English's office where they said they wanted to get to settlement in seven months, and it was a, a Tui's advert kind of moment. They walked out and we said, yeah, right. <laughs> well, a, a deed of settlement was signed just seven months later because they were utterly committed to the task. This settlement is not just special because it's the fastest treaty settlement. It's special because it has all the hallmarks of what the treaty partners were aiming for in signing the treaty in 1840. It's a partnership which is courageous, it's pragmatic, it's future focused with strong leadership and able to harness its collective strength to work for the mutual benefit of two peoples who do want to do something extraordinary, regardless of what people may hear in this chamber from time to time. This settlement set a new standard in the resolution of treaty claims. I want to thank my parliamentary colleagues past and present who have worked on the settlement, the Deputy Prime Minister, the Honourable Kate Wilkinson, the Honourable Louise Upston, the Honourable Nanaya Mahuta, without bringing you into the debate, Sir Yu, uh, and the Honourable Nick Smith. I want to thank the Matamata Piako District Council, the, Waia, the, Waiapa, uh, the Waiapu D District Council and the Waikato Regional Council for their contributions to the settlement. And I also want to acknowledge the various agencies of government involved in the negotiations who fully embraced what we were trying to achieve. Uh, I don't need reminding you, sir, that Ngāti Hawa is an eastern Waikato iwi, uh, represented in these negotiations by the Ngāti Hawa iwi trust. The people of Ngāti Hawa descend from their ancestor Hawa, and they affiliate to the Tainui Waka. Their customary rohe spans from Te Arawa and Te Rapa in the north, moving south to uh, to Wairati and to Mongatotari. The deed of settlement is the final settlement of all historical treaty claims of Ngāti Hawa, resulting from acts uh, or omissions by the Crown prior to 21 September 1992. The Ropatu claims of Ngāti Hawa were settled through the Waikato Tainui Ropatu Claims Settlement Act of 1995 <coughs> and the Waikato Tainui uh, Ropatu claims Waikato River Settlement Act. The settlement addresses the non Ropatu historical claims of Ngāti Hawa not settled <coughs> by earlier settlements. The Crown recognised the mandate of the Trust in 
uh, December 2012, and as I said, the agreement in principle was signed on 19 February 2013. The bill gives effect to the undertakings by the Crown on the deeds signed by the parties on 24 May 2013. The settlement provides financial, commercial and cultural redress. The settlement also acknowledges where Crown acts and omissions have breached the treaty and its principles, including the operation and impact of the native land laws on Ngāti Hawa, the Crown's purchase of Ngāti Hawa land in disregard of the collective decision of the owners not to sell, the cumulative effect of the Crown's actions and omissions, leaving Ngāti Hawa with insufficient land for their present and their future needs. Mr Speaker, the settlement acknowledges Paramount Chief Wiramu Tamahana's historical fight for justice in the wake of the Waikato War and Ropatu. On several occasions he petitioned Parliament detailing the injustice of the war to seek recognition for the harm done to his people and to find a pragmatic way to, work forward, to move forward. In his third and final petition, Tamehana referred to his great darkness and sorrow of heart and stated that he had travelled to Wellington in the hope that the great weight upon him might be lifted. Following his death, his second son carried on his fight for justice. Mr Speaker, the role of Tumawaki is an historic and it's a hereditary role. It encompasses significant political and spiritual functions for Ngāti Hauwa and the Kingitanga and it's pivotal to the Ngāti Hauwa identity. Wurimu Tamihana and successive Tumawaki sought a pragmatic way forward on behalf of their people. So I'm honoured to stand in this House and work with other members to make amends for the past and to move forward into the future. The deed of settlement envisages a new mutually mana enhancing relationship between the Tumawaki and the Crown in, in, settling, in setting out to achieve a new relationship, the settlement provides unique redress that includes meetings with the Crown, the Tumawaki and Ngāti Hawa to occur on an annual basis. Mr Speaker, a special feature of the settlement is a relationship agreement between Ngāti Hawa, the Department of Internal Affairs and Te Papa with respect to the restoration and protection of Te Whanganui o Mahuta. Mr Speaker, this is a whare taonga and it's a monument at that beautiful Ruku Moana Marae dedicated to the establishment of the Māori Parliament and it holds a very impressive collection of taonga. Mr Speaker, the loss Ngāti Hawa suffered can never be fully, fully compensated for by the Crown and much of what was lost simply cannot be returned. However, the people of Ngāti Hawa have graciously agreed to accept the redress contained in the deed of settlement, and in so doing, I acknowledge their generosity towards this land. I certainly do look forward to a strong relationship in the future. That's one of the reasons why this government has established a post-settlement commitments unit to ensure that the Crown keeps its promises, not just tomorrow, but for, uh, in the years to come. If I can say this, the National and the Labour parties understand the importance of this because they have experience in government. And down through the generations, successive governments of whatever hue have done their best to address these issues. And I think of names like Nata and Hannan, Rata, Horomia, whose book uh, by a good National Party person uh, was launched last night, Graham, Bolger, Cullen. Th th these are people who, regardless of political affiliation, have done their best to address these issues. But there are those who can simply snipe on the sidelines because that's all they have to offer. They may be very pleased with their moral superiority, but actually they contribute nothing. They never do. Tomorrow, we hold the Waikato Waipa River Iwi Fora, 
and both sides, in the, in the language of the diplomats, are going to have a full and frank discussion. Uh, and I'll be meeting with Maniapoto, Waikato Tainui, Rokawa, and other iwi, and we'll be addressing issues arising out of their settlements over the river and other matters. Uh, and it won't be, uh, quite frankly, uh, kumbaya lovin'. There'll be some pretty straight talking, but that's as it should be. Straight talking on both sides, because both sides want this to work. So it's all very well to come down here and right. snipe and uh, exhibit one's right. great moral superiority, but that means nothing. The proof of the pudding is in this kind of meeting, uh, as both parties understand it. So, Mr Speaker, I commend the bill to the House.